over to the other side of the room for a second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I would like to speak on behalf of the theater majors and all the actors in the group of how <clears throat> there's nothing better than holding a tangible script in your hand and being able to mark and make annotations on the spot. And I can only imagine how frustrating and awkward it would be to walk around with a laptop and try to make annotations using just a keyboard. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to come uh, come down in favor of the Prime Minister's premises of her argument, but unfortunately not the conclusion, which is um, which was, I suppose, to, to say that the Gutenberg book is dead. Uh, what the premises seem to have suggested is not that the book is dead, but that the ebook is alive. Uh, we've heard of the many things that electronic media can do to overcome the limitations of print. We've heard of new technologies, interactivity, all of these things. Um, this is analogous to explaining why airplane travel overcomes the limitations of walking, um, which it does. I'm unable to walk to Toronto in five hours. I certainly can't do it with 40 pounds of luggage. The uh, the airplane is a newer, more advanced technology, providing faster access and giving people new ways of connecting to each other, which is what the ebook does. But the advancement of one technology does not force the obsolescence of another, and I don't believe that the book is dead just because the ebook has been given the technology to flourish. Um, I would like to make a definitional intervention for the today. Um, the, the question was raised as to how many of us currently carry around a scroll. And the fact is, most of us currently carry around a scroll. I have an iPod. And one of the reasons why when I listen to a podcast, I can either listen to it from beginning to end, or I can fast forward through it sequentially, or possibly make large jumps from chapter to chapter in ways that are clearly defined is because the technology in the iPod, just like in the microfilm and the VHS tape, is a scroll technology. Um, the book, I would say, is not the Gutenberg book, nor is it even necessarily um, you know, medieval manuscripts. What we're talking about is, is the original digital technology, in which you use your digits to either read sequentially or not sequentially, as is your choice. And in many ways, the, the electronic books that you're talking about and all of the electronic technologies that you're talking about are simply variations of that. It's actually not a new technology. It simply is an expansion of a fundamental technology that allows one to read discontinuously. So the book can't die as long as we want to read in some way that isn't sequential. And we do still have scrolls. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my sense is that the resolution of the book is dead is really rather too absolute. Um, perhaps it could have been the book is dying might have been a little more accurate uh, for a, a legitimate debate. But um, I think that that's rather similar in, in fact to resolutions and debates that are currently held by real life governments. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a few comments to make here. Um, E-books are no better at being read than books. And it would be just as shallow to display books on one's bookshelf as it might be to display a bunch of hardware in a corner somewhere to do the uptake and downloading of such electronic media. Um, books and e-books both can be read, orally enjoyed, and uh, discussed and debated by two children, two partners, two elders. It's, that's a social context, and how we construct our social context is irrelevant to uh, the format. Um, e-books to young brains. I wonder if I might pose a question to the government if the light or electronic effects 
of such things has been impacted or, or studied on uh, the effects of young brains and how much that excites them and not put them to sleep after all. <laughs> and also, finally, is the government on a payroll of some kind from one entity or another? <laughs> Both the government and the opposition do this because they love it. <laughs> <laughs> One more question over here, maybe we'll have five more minutes here. I would ask the question is, is that if if books are dead, why is there such a demand for ebooks to be rendered through print on demand? And we must remember that the word ebook has the word book in it. Most of its digits. Thank you. Are there any other statements from the floor? the assertion that the book is a tool of cultural imperialism, and therefore I am uh, opposing myself in a statement uh, to the assertion that the book is dead. Um, rather than promoting imperialism, access to books tends to exhibit democratizing pressures on oppressive systems, as Soviet circulators of Samyaz literature may recall. The supplementary form of the e-book, known as substitute form, that is an appetizer for traditional books, stands to cripple, similarly, the worst excesses of the inefficient systems of distribution that have heretofore characterized the book trade in the industrialized nations. The capital-dependent inefficiencies of the system of physical sales-oriented distribution themselves amplify the troubling environmental costs of book production, a one-time cost, instead of a long tail of environmental costs while we rely on non-renewable energy sources to recharge our e-book readers. We have no reason to mourn the bulk of disposable guides and short-lived handbooks geared towards six-month selling seasons in bookstores, as nearly half the product by volume that you'll find in distribution warehouses. The book is not dead, but hopefully its worst excesses are out the door. Thank you. Thank you all. We have heard from the members of the government. We have heard from the members of the loyal opposition. We have heard from the citizens. And unlike Coriolanus, I am delighted to hear from the voices, the sweet voices of the citizens. Thank you all for your comments on the floor. So I bring this debate to a close for now. And what lies in front of us? is the vote. I will remind you of the resolution in front of us. Be it resolved that the book is dead. I'll give you some time to think about your vote. You will be asked to show your hands, and perhaps my video scribes and members of parliament could help me to scan the audience to get a very accurate count of uh, how people are voting. Are we ready to call the question? Question. 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 Say question. <laughs> All right. Be it resolved that the book is dead. All of those in favor, the ayes. Six, three, four, five. That's all the way up to six. Uh, seven. How do you do this? Eight. Ten. Ten. Anyone willing to vote in the second ballot? Ten. And so the uh, motion on the floor be it resolved that the book is dead. All those opposed, the nays. Greater than 10. <laughs> so that, uh, having good Montessori training and number bundles, I can do that. Uh, uh, all right. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my duty as speaker to inform you that the resolution is defeated. <laughs> and I thank you all very much for your participation. Please join me in thanking the members of Parliament in our conference here. And in your absence, I do want to thank members uh, in the Faculty of Humanities, uh, Chicago Energy, Blair Taylor, people of the Outreach and Communications Committee, Tim Isles for doing the lovely poster that uh, perhaps attracted you, and Tim and Chris for helping with uh, audiovisual aspects of this. Please feel free, sit around, chat amongst yourselves, and I'll remind you again that uh, at 7 o'clock